Hey guys, how's it going? Crane here. This is going to be a sponsored video. It's going to be about Savage Resurrection. It has just come out, and while I did a video about a month ago regarding the game, which you guys are free to check out, the game has actually stepped up a lot in this month or so. So, you know, originally, uh, when I checked out the game for the first time about a month back, it was basically the game that I played when I was a kid. It was the game I played, you know, the, the 10 plus year old game I played on stream a couple years ago on, you know, we had Savage Sundays every now and then. It was that game. It was uh, an updated graphics, updated mechanics, updated netcode. Everything was smoother, everything was a little bit crisper, but it was that game. And, you know, I was obviously very happy with that, and I didn't think too much more would come of it, but they asked me to do a video after the launch, and it's launched. I check out the game again, I've played it a few days on stream, and I have been blown away. The game is actually a step up from the original Savage. You know, they did improve a lot of things, they did actually create new things and new mechanics in the Savage world, and I think all the things that they did are actually positive, and and I was really surprised they were able to do so many things that were actually positive. Because usually when you change something that's like almost perfect, which the original Savage was, um, you kind of screw things up a lot in the way. And some things that you think might be good end up not being good. But from the time that I've played since launch, I really think they moved the game in a new direction. And while it is absolutely a resurrection of the original game, the new mechanics do make it more compelling of a game to play. So today I want to give you guys a play-by-play -play of one of the matches I played off stream where I really really kicked some ass and I'm going to go over the new mechanics, the new features in the game as it's happening. So let's get right into it. So here, I'm just coming off a of death. You know, I didn't really do too well uh, in the start of this game, but that's not too important. Here you can see the menu where you get units, where you get upgrades. So Savage is kind of like an FPS game, but you have the melee combat, you have a lot of different aspects that are not in an FPS game, and it's a team-based FPS game. There can be as many as 16 players to one team, and one player plays as commander. The commander is playing like an RTS version of the game, and you can see the bases. You can see that you can teleport on uh, a few different bases there. Uh, the commander's job is to give the upgrades and build the bases in the correct position and guard the bases with the towers. The commander gets 10 workers, but the workers don't really do as much as you'd think. They're not very good at developing bases in new situations. So here I'm in the human side. You can see I'm up against the beast. I'm using a tier 2 uh, unit. So when, when any game starts, you're not going to have any of these upgrades. You're not going to have to choose between different units. But this Again, this is a bit of a developed game here. And we're in a state where we just got these tier 2 units. They're pretty powerful. They're certainly much more powerful than the first units. And the game that I'm playing now is in the standard format. One of the new features that um, is, is in this new version of Savage after release is one that you can either choose have an automatically AI, so computer assigned commander. So it's it's not gonna be as good as a player commander, but it is gonna be fair. And the commander has a huge influence on who wins the game, so I really like this aspect of it. So I'm playing standard because I just like the fairness and because it's generally noobs and I like slaying noobs in the game. But you can play advanced mode as well, where it's fully player driven. And trust me, you want to have a really good commander if you're playing advanced mode. But I'm really happy that they have this. Here you can see another new feature that they introduced. It's the kind of like teleport to home base. It takes like four or five seconds and you can't act and if you get hit it breaks the cast, but you teleport back to home, and this is a really big deal. Right now, I'm upgrading to the tier 3 Attack unit. I'm now a Legionnaire. The Legionnaire does more damage. He has much longer range, but he attacks a lot slower, which makes his attacks more predictable. But generally, in this match, I'm mostly using the Coil Rifle. This is the tier 3, um, uh, I think, it's a magnetic weapon. And it's kind of like a sniper gun. It doesn't do as much damage as some of the actual sniper weapons in the game, but it lets you be mobile with it. So it's very good at picking off weak opponents at range. And range is very, very high. It's 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 the the buffer of safety. You can see that I'm approaching the the area where the uh, the opponents, the beasts, have kind of like a sublitter, which is kind of like a, a spawn point structure that they've created there, so their units can attack. And it's right outside our home base. So I'm trying to kind of 
push them away, seeing if we can get in there and, you know, siege down that thing eventually. That's the idea. And I'm mostly playing the landmine game. So landmines are really powerful, particularly against newer players, because they don't really know what's going on. So they just step on them and blow up and die in one hit. Um, and... Oh, that was, that was a good hit. Uh, landmines are particularly powerful when they're just researched because your opponents, you know, start to expect landmines after they die to them once or twice. But in the first uh, start, like in, in the start of the game, when you just get landmines, um, that's when they're the most powerful because often your opponents won't see them coming because they won't even think you've researched them at that point. So right now I'm just kind of going base to base. I'm trying to keep my distance. I'm trying to put as many landmines constantly down through all the different areas because as you saw in in that screen, I'm requesting gold from the team, from the commander's resource pool of gold. Gold is earned by just killing players, killing monsters, or you can mine the gold. Mining the gold is horribly inefficient, you don't really want to do that. But the idea is that all, all, all the weapons, all the, the little items that I have, even the landmines themselves, they cost gold, so um, landmines are particularly effective uh, against, again, players that run into them, which are generally newer players, but they're very effective at, like, you know, if you have a fully decked out unit, it's like 4,000 gold, and you run over a land with like 500, you instantly die, and there's, you know, there's no, there's almost no drawback there. Here I'm trying to kill siege units, those are the summoners, that's the siege unit of the beast. This is a very ambitious teleport, by the way, you can see the enemies are right there. If they hit me once, I would have died there, but luckily they, they ignored me, they went for my opponent there, uh, my friend there, and you can see here my health is actually recuperating. This is another feature that they introduced now in the launch of the game that I really liked. So if you are in uh, like your home base or a sub base structure, your unit regenerates health over time while not on the field, and it's at a very fast rate. It's probably over like five seconds you fully regenerate your health, and this makes it so you can play much more passively. Like I got a hit in. Uh, so you can see, um, that was a tier 2 beast unit, and uh, he got pretty good damage. Here, I can see they're, they're trying to rush the base, but I don't want to go head on, I want to go behind and try to snipe a few kills. The element of surprise is really one of the biggest factors which lets you win in this game. There I was right about to die, but I teleported into the structure instead of taking that lethal hit. So that's a predator, that's a tier 3 beast unit. It's probably one of the most, it probably is the most feared unit in the game, the predator just because of its long range, and you can see beasts have that ability to hop around. Humans have the ability to block. Block is a bit more passive as hopping around uh, in the hands of a good player, uh, a great player sometimes, can be, can seem almost invincible. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a good Savage player, but I'm not as good as some of the players who've been playing this game, you know, 10, 15 years since the original version had come out. So here we go, again, I'm just playing the, uh, the, 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 trying to stabilize our bases, I'm trying to mine up all the situations. That giant unit there is the behemoth, that is the, the, the tier 2 siege unit of the beasts. And it has a ton of HP, it's very slow, it's weak to certain uh, weapons, uh, but you know, when it hits something, it tends to kill it. So there it's pro yeah, that's definitely gonna finish the sub there. Oh, but instead the player seems to maybe back off a little bit. So I kind of give up on that guy. I think that guy's just gonna level the base, so I decide to go for a few kills. There you see a block in effect. Blocking low tier units is a bit of a waste sometimes, but um, yeah, it's all right. Blocking and reducing damage you take by about 90 to 95%. Uh, you can see in the lower left there that, you know, I'm level 8. I think at level 7 or level 8 you get a shield, which reduces the, the damage you take from blocking even further. So blocking is pretty good. Blocking offers like a 1 second stun, uh, and it allows you to hit the opponent, which is going to have the, the mobility advantage if, if they're a beast that is. The other resource, you see this. You see the health, but you also see the, the the yellow thing. The yellow thing is kind of like your stamina. So in this game, you can you can sprint, which is kind of the combat mechanic you use as a human to get in range. So I'm sprinting right now. But whenever you first exit your uh, home base or a sub base, you 
you have like a limited number of seconds where you automatically sprint and you don't use up your stamina. So this is again one of the new features in this patch. And again, it's all these small quality of life features that they introduce just make the game feel so smooth and, you know, kind of have a focus on actual combat rather than, you know, micromanaging a few resources when you really shouldn't have to, you know, going in and out of home base, uh, you know, using, using medikits, going back in and out, getting a few more. It just alleviates that so much and it's such a pleasure to play. You can see my aim, you know, doesn't doesn't seem to be very good. If you've seen like, you know, good FPS players, they're certainly gonna have better aim than I am. And even in this game, you know, I'm I'm not like the best player with guns. But you have to keep in mind that in this game, most weapons are pretty slow. Uh, you can even you can even dodge a lot of the weapon hits, you can even block a lot of the weapon hits if you're a human. And because they're like projectile driven, it is actually much harder to aim. And a lot of the time, uh, the only way you can hit your opponent is by predicting the movement. And you can see, there's some workers. So work, there's only 10 workers, and they're very weak units. This tells me that the Beast Commander is trying to, to build uh, a base there. This is like the middle of the map, so it's very important that they do not build this base. That's why I'm using my ammo to kill those workers, even though they're not players. So it looks like it's a bit of a brawl here, but it seems like we have a few more players than they did, and we wiped out their building squad. So if, if I was like a Beast player and I would be attacking this building, I would be building the building. I could also attack a mine like for resources, and I, I could act. My player could act as a worker for the team and sometimes uh, that can be a very big asset you know combat is not the only um, not the only aspect to the game it is it's a team-based game and you can contribute to your team in great ways without killing other players but in this case you guys have noticed I think I'm on like a 20 killing streak so far I'm really rocking it there we go block easy kill I'm at 33 kills in a row. I think this is the most kills I've ever had, by the way. I think I've cruised around the 30s in a row in uh, the original Savage, but this is this is this is some savage combat right here. I'm using the hop thing, so if if you get a good jump, and like the physics in this game is like perfect, so if you get a good Attack jump on like an angled surface and you keep jumping, you kind of create momentum. So there's a lot of these small things that are kind of difficult for me to pick up on when I'm watching because I've played, like I played the original Savage for like two years when I was in high school, so a lot of the core mechanics are exactly the same and feel so intuitive for me that sometimes it's hard to even know what I'm talking about. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to uh, keep, uh, keep very defensive. You can see that a lot of the opponents have tier 1 units, which means a lot of the opponents have no gold. So if you deny them kills, they're going to keep coming back with tier 1 units. So it doesn't matter so much that I'm going in there and killing them as fast as possible. The, the defensive play here, the denial, like kind of the fatigue game, I think is easily the, the better choice. Uh, with beasts, their their tier one units are really not threatening at all, but their tier three melee units are just devastating. Melee combat in this game is like extremely high skill, but you know when when you get into melee combat, even a player like me who's played this game for so long, I can get caught off guard very easily in melee, and melee has just tremendous damage. I could die in like one second. If I'm, if I'm caught, caught in a bad spot, and it's going to be my fault, but because of the skill cap involved in melee combat, that does happen pretty regularly. It does three consecutive hits on a jumping opponent with a sniper. That was, that was pretty badass. I'm trying to get a few uh, long range kills here. I also think they, they altered something with the nameplates. The nameplates are a little bit different than I remember them uh, just a month ago. You can see the health of the players and they seem to kind of show when you're aiming near that range. It definitely feels, again, just a lot smoother, much higher quality of life. 37 kills in a row, still going. You can see that we're moving into onto their, uh, uh, I think it's Lair. It's just lair. It's basically the home base of the beast. So a team is going to win when the home base goes down. And while you know that is your primary focus, if that's the only thing you focus on, you're going to get slaughtered. So right now, we're, again, we're trying to play the gold denial game. We're trying to surround them. We're trying to create a very favorable position. And um, you know. There are some siege units in this game that can do very good siege damage. The human ones actually received a few quality of life features from, uh, again, a month ago. Um, the human siege units can actually uh, aim a lot better and you get a much better feel for the range of things. But, um, you know, I, I just want to Rambo it up. I want to be the dude with the gun. I want to rake in kills. You know, if, I, if I'm at like 37 kills in a row, 
let's see how high we can get. So usually at this spot, I'd probably actually pick up the siege unit to try to end the game because we're actually in a dominant position. You can see one of the siege units there got taken down. You can't expect to, to stay alive forever as a siege unit. You're, the idea is, you know, you kind of take one for the team, you're, gonna, you're going to die, but if you can get a few critical siege shots in the meantime, your efforts are absolutely worth it. Fear me, foul just sniping a few more kills. Just kind of preventing them from reaching us. So, the idea is, if, if we're kind of gating them off, we're kind of starving them of gold, then our siege units, whoever wants to pick one up, um, is going to have a much easier time. You know, they're, they're going to be very well protected. So you can see there are some siege units behind me right now. Oh, that's the Kong. That's the tier 2 siege units. There's like three of them. So I believe this, this game is going to end very soon because those do devastating damage to the buildings. And it does! I don't know how many kills in a row that was. I think it was like 41 to 43 or something. And that's that's basically the game. Um, the starting position of the game is a little bit different than that. You know, a lot less stuff goes on, but it quickly ramps up. You know, some games last like five minutes, but some can last a whole hour. So it's very dynamic. There's a lot of interesting things. And, you know... It, it's, it's such a feel-good game for me, and I really wanted to share with you guys the experience. I wanted to share kind of like the playthrough so you can kind of understand generally what to expect if you do want to pick up the game and check it out. And I can tell you, it is one of those games that you can get a little bit lost in. So I hope you guys enjoyed my in-depth kind of playthrough review here. Maybe you guys pick up the game, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.